All right, Sam Martin, 11C Media Studies Coronavirus Lockdown Project, coming to you live from my bedroom. No, 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 crap. All right, Sam Martin, 11C Media Studies Lockdown Project. Mr. Baker said to do this online diary kind of thing. Like Samuel Pepys in The Great Plague of London. Samuel Pepys weren't online though, didn't know what online was, did he? That's right, you're down in books with feathers or something. Mr. B says ours could be looked at in 350 years time. I doubt it, because we'll all be living on Mars or something by then. Anyways, Mr. B says I'm the man for this job because of my name. Samuel, not Pepys. So... Here goes. I'm not going to lie. Things are pretty rank now. This stuff doesn't feel real. It's like a Hollywood movie. A deadly virus threatens civilization as we know it, and Finn Wolfhard has to save the world. Except... Finn Wolfhard self-isolating in Vancouver and we've all got to fend for ourselves. Stay inside. Don't go out. Don't see your friends. Don't hang down Broadfields Park. Nothing new for me there anyways. Don't touch anything. Wash your hands. Don't breathe in case you breathe it in. The whole world is scared to breathe. So... This is me, my lockdown diary. My world, these four walls of my bedroom. All wait. Kitchen. Mom. Oh, shit. So, I live with my dad. He's not well. You know what? He was saying to me the other night, all oh, these people moaning about lockdown don't know where they're born. Says he's been in lockdown for seven years. That's about right. Army man, para. Stepped on a landmine in Afghan back in 2013. Boom. I was eight. I didn't get it at the time. I was angry with him because he couldn't play football with me. Mum walked out. Not because of the football. Dark times. I helped out with the washing up, cooking. We ate a lot of baked beans then. Dad Cut his hand on a can once. Freaked out because of the blood. Dragged himself under the table, screaming. I do all the cooking now. Shopping. Keep the house tidy. Change his dressings. Now I'm older, I think. Why didn't he get help? Too proud. Wouldn't accept that mum weren't coming back. They often talk at school about inspirational figures. Mr. B says people who, through their words and deeds, by their example, help to form who we are. Dad's always been my inspiration. He used to say, no matter how dark your world is, how black, there is always light. You just have to look for it. My world's black, all right. Don't sleep well. Worry is buzzing in my head like flies on a windowsill. Struggle at school because I'm always tired. Keep telling myself to look for the light. There's good days. 
We used to go to the football, just county, couldn't afford city. I go free as his carer. Only time he ever calls me that. Beef and potato pie at half time. Dad shouting and swearing at the referee. A lot of anger being channeled there. Good times. I'm not gonna lie. Dad's not easy to live with, yeah? There's some days now he just stares in silence. There's an emptiness about him. He's let himself go. The light he promised me feels way, way, way away. I think I preferred the shouting and swearing because at least that showed he hadn't given up. Chronic fatigue syndrome, depression. About two years ago, he stopped leaving his room. Now, along comes coronavirus. Dad's highest risk, so can't see him face to face. He sleeps on the sofa bed. I make his tea. And leave it here. Dad hits the door with his stick when he's finished with the plates. The virus hasn't changed Dad's world. He never went out anyway. He's still got his Netflix. But I feel it. Before, the outside was my escape. I'd go to the shops and, yeah, I hated having to talk to people looking at me funny. The 15-year-old picking up Satilipram. But while I was out, I was free from the smell of this place. I could breathe. Stay indoors, protect the NHS, save lives. So now, like I said, these four walls, my world. Look for the light. I had to go to the chemist yesterday to pick up his meds and it's weird, yeah, because all the streets are empty. On a wall, there's this new bit of graffiti says, in the end, it will all be okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. I'm looking at this and it hits me. I want it to be true. Right now, true hurts, yeah? But it's all I've got, so... I better hold on to it. Anyways, Mr. B says we should talk about what we do day to day and how that's been changed by COVID-19. I couldn't think of any big changes. Yeah, it was touch and go for a while and we couldn't get baked beans at the shops, but we got through that. Then... I thought about the stories. Dad never read me stories at bedtime. That was always mum's thing. And by the time she leaves, for me, storybooks don't seem so important anyways. But since the boom, Dad gets more into reading. It fills the time. He has so much time to fill. Every book in the house. He reads all my Harry Potters. Cooking books, car manuals, Ikea catalogues, anything. I get books from the library. I can't keep up. I bring one home in the evening and by morning it's finished. <laughs> the woman at the library thinks I'm some kind of freak. Till I tell her who they're for, then she starts helping me out with recommendations. You know, based on what Dad likes. Weird stuff like science fiction and fantasy novels. 
As dad gets worse, he stops reading for himself, but he still wants stories. We work our way through every audiobook in the library. Then, on March 18th, Covid closes every library in the UK. That might not seem such a big thing to you, but that was a lifeline cut. I start making stories up and telling them to it. Anything that comes in my head. Mr B would be proud. I think Dad likes them. If he doesn't, he never says. Once upon the darkest of times, a young bear called Arkai wakes early from hibernation. He's been asleep for what feels like his whole life, and he wants to go outside. From beyond the cave, he feels the cold, still, dead wind of winter. His stomach is wrung out with hunger. His brain bruised with broken thoughts of longing. He rolls over and forces himself back to sleep. Weeks later, Arkai wakes again. Lifting his heavy head, he peers through the half-dark to see the vast, still, solid shape of his father, king of the bears, like a mountain who sleeps on. Moving closer, the young bear's nostrils fill with the heavy scent of this great animal. He hears the distant rumble of breath, sees the deep scars that run through his father's fur. This old beast is a warrior and has proven his might, beating many a bitter rival. But the king's peak of pomp is a little behind him, and Arkai feels the weight of expectancy fall upon his own fragile shoulders. A new year waits outside. The smell of spring sneaks into the cave. Could this be his year? Surely too soon. He doesn't feel ready, but he longs for light, warmth and freedom. Arkai steps unsteadily away from the mountain and towards the outside. He knows the sunlight will feed his frail body, but his tired legs buckle beneath him. He summons up strength and courage from some place way inside him, somewhere bigger, deeper and older than himself. He steps out into the light. This is just a chapter. My story hasn't finished. This is not the end.